Good day, future RMTs. Welcome to our discussion about flagellates. For our learning outcomes, we have recall the morphology, life cycle, pathogenesis, and epidemiology of different flagellated protozoans. And we also have to discuss the diagnostic features of each flagellated protozoans. To start with, let us review first no, the classifications of our of our flagellates. This is un still under protozoans, and we said that this is under phylum, mas uh, subphylum, mastigophora, class zoomastigophora. And we can classify flagellates into two intestinal species and the extra intestinal species. This classification is based on the habitat of the hemoflagellates in the body. Okay, again, when we said flagellated, no, uh, these are protozoans equipped with what we call flagella. Okay, and this flagellate, no, uh, this flagella is their structure for locomotion. Okay. It is it aids our flagellates to move. We also have axostyle. Axostyle can be seen in selected flagellates. For example, of flagellated protozoan with axostyle is trichomonas. Okay, where axostyle is a rod-like structure. This structure supports the body of our flagellates. We also have what we call axonym. When we said axonym, that is the intracellular portion of the flagellum. Cytostome is rudimentary mouth opening in some flagellates. Um, uh, median bodies, okay, median bodies are comma-shaped structures that can be found in the cytoplasm of Jarja intestinalis. Take note that Jarja intestinalis is also known as Jarja lambia. Median bodies can be described also as the structure that is associated with energy, metabolism, and support. Okay. However, the exact function of our median bodies remains unclear, okay? Now, how about undulating membrane? Undulating membrane is a fin-like structure that also helps our selected protozoans or selected flagellates for their locomotion. Example of flagellated parasite that is equipped with undulating membrane is our trichomonas, okay? Remember, that undulating mem membrane can be found on the outer edge of selected trochozoids of our flagellates. Okay, again, it aids our flagellated protozoans for their motility, moving in a wave-like pattern. On the other hand, we have our costa. Costa is a rod-like structure that is located at the base of the undulating membrane. Okay, located between the undulating membrane and the body of certain flagellated trophozoites. Okay, it may also aid in supporting the undulating membrane. Now, how about for the morphology and life cycles or life cycle of our flagellates. Since this is protozoans and almost true with our uh, amoebas, there are also two distinct morphological forms of our flagellated pro uh, protozoans. These are trophozoites and seeds. However, it is interesting to note that not all flagellates has a cystic form. If you will still remember our discussion last time about amoebas, we said that Entamoeba gingivalis is the only 
uh, uh, protozoan. It's the only amoeba no, which has a trophozoic morphology only. Here, in flagellates, most or most of our flagellated uh, pro, uh, parasites, no, they only have these trophozoites as the morphological form. You might wonder how come that they only have trophozoites? And we all know that the trophozoites are easily destroyed. Okay? Take note that if the parasite of the selected protozoans or if, uh, the morphological forms, not the trophozoite form of this flagellate exists, it is believed that this trophozoite form of our flagellated uh, protozoans are able to exist outside the environment and they can also survive in the human stomach, even in human stomach juices upon ingestion. Thus, it allows them or it allows the parasite to remain viable. Let's make it clear. We said last time and we agreed that the trophozoite form of our protozoans are easily destroyed. However, you know, as a general classification, there will always be a uh, exemption in the general rule. Generally, trophozoites are easily destroyed. However, these flagellated parasites, flagellated protozoans that exist only as trophozoites, their trophozoites is believed to be susceptible, uh, to be resistant in the external environment. Thus, they are capable to survive in the acidity level of our gastric juices. Having said that they are capable to survive in the acidic level of our gastric juices, they can still viable and can cause infection, most especially in immunocompromised patients. Take note also that the ingestion of infected cyst when present is the initiation of the infection. That is the, uh, the infective stage, as we said, in, pro in protozoans, no? in amoebas in particular. Okay? Uh, usually, the food or contaminated food or water is the primary source of our parasitic infection in relation to our uh, flagellates. Like what I've said a while ago, trophozoites emerge in the intestine after the ingestion. Okay. Let's say, for example, Georgia lambia or Georgia intestinalis or Georgia duodenalis trophozoites take up residence in the duodenum. Okay. That's why it is essential, you know, if we are going to evaluate the presence of Georgia lambia, it is also nice to have duodenal aspirates. No, if you still remember entero test or the sting test, which will require the patient to consume a capsule with string, and then after incubation, it will be pulled, no? so that the patient will be able to produce duodenal aspirate. And this duodenal aspirate is essential for us to demonstrate the presence of our Georgia intestinalis. Why? Because the trophozoites of our Georgia intestinalis, Georgia lambia, or Georgia uh, duodenalis can be found, no? Or is capable to reside in the duodenum. If you still remember encystation and existation, it is also true with our flagellates. Okay? They insist also, and typically, the insistation of, of flagellates occurs in the ileocecal area of the intestine. Okay? Another one is the trophozoites in the intestinal tract. It is where the the parasites, no, it is where the parasites multiply actively. Okay. And like our bacteria and like our uh, amoebas, they multiply via 
asexual reproduction known as binary fission. Okay? Now, changes in the intestinal environment will require our protozoans, our flagellates to existation or to undergo what we call existation. Okay? Remember, uh, when intestinal environment is no longer conducive for the tropocytes replication, encystation become, become, uh, occurs. No? Encystation begins to occur in the life cycle of those flagellates that have both tropozoites and cysts. However, if they don't have the cystic formation or the cyst form, no, the tropozoites remains as is. Okay? Now, the cyst and the tropozoites might be the diagnostic stages for some flagellated. Let's say, for example, Trichomonas hominis. Trichomonas hominis exists as a tropozoite only. Therefore, we cannot say that the infective stage is the cyst. Okay, because they don't have cyst. The infective stage is the tropozoite. And the diagnostic stage is also the tropozoite. Please take note of that. Okay. Uh, this is what I'm saying. Tropozoites or cysts can be the diagnostic stages. And usually can be found in stool. Since again, most of our flagellated protozoans are intestinal parasites. Can tropozoites reside outside the body? Yes. In some cases, or in some parasites, in some flagellated parasites. Example of which, Trichomonas species. Can cysts reside outside the environment? Yes, they can survive, definitely. Okay. Cysts can survive. They can continue to develop even outside the body. No? And upon uh, and the entry of cyst form in the in the another human or in another host means new cycle will begin. Okay, remember in life cycles with only tropozoites, the tropozoites are viable in the external environment and they are assumed the role, or they assume the role of our cyst. Now, for laboratory findings or diagnosis, most of our flagellated uh, uh, flagellates requires stool as the sample of choice. Again, why? Because most of them are what? Most of them are intestinal parasites. Aside from that, okay, Extra intestinal flagellates can require or may require the following mouth scrapings, example of which is for George Anano, for Trichomonas tenax, centrifuge urine for Trichomonas, hemato uh, Trichomonas vaginalis. Vaginal urethral discharge may also require for or require for Trichomonas vaginalis as well as prostatic secretion. Now remember that the most intestinal flagellate infections are asymptomatic. In fact, there are only two flagellated protozoa, uh, protozoans that can cause serious infection. There are only two no, flagellated protozoans that can cause serious infections. And who are those? We have our Giardia lambia or Giardia intestinalis as well as Trichomonas vaginalis. And the rest are considered asymptomatic. However, it is also important for us to take note the presence of these parasites, even though that can, they can cause asymptomatic infection. Bakit? Because the presence of these and commensal flagellates, we can call them commensal flagellates, like commensal amoebas, 
the presence of this commensal flagellate suggests that the human or the host consume contaminated food or drink. Okay, again, the only intestinal flagellate parasite that can be considered pathogenic is what we call Jarja intestinalis. Again, the only intestinal is Jarja intestinalis. The only intestinal parasite that can cause, or the only intestinal flagellated parasite that can cause infection ay sino? Ulitin natin, walang iba kundi si Jarja intestinalis. Now, kapag naman ang sinabi, the only in, uh, extra intestinal flagellated protozoans ay sino yun? Or the only extra intestinal flagellate flagellates. Sino po yun? ADC trichomonas vaginalis. Okay. Now, let's start the discussion with Jarja intestinalis. Jarja intestinalis, no? also known as the Jarja lambia, also known as the uh, Jarja duodenalis. The tropozoids of Jarja intestinalis ranges from 8 to 20 micrometers by 5 to 16 micrometers. And the average length of Jarja intestinalis is 10 to 15 micrometers. It is interesting to know and to remember that the morphological characteristics of our tropozoids resembles the old man's face. This is what I am telling before or during our orientation. It is not necessary or it is not enough for you to just remember the old man's face of the Jarja intestinalis tropozoid. Take note of this. The old man's face is true with Jarja intestinalis tropozoid, not to cyst, to tropozoid only. Now again, like what I'm saying, it is not enough for you to remember or for you to just remember that this is a old man's face. Because how are you going to describe an old man's face if you will not remember what is the inclusions or what is in the trunk of a uh, uh, ito? tropozoid form of our Georgia intestinalis. Now, in order for you to take note of that, you have to remember that this old man's face, this is the right way to, uh, to inform or to describe your Georgia intestinalis. The eyes of old man's face, yun po yung nukli. Okay? That is the nuclei of our tropozoid. The nuclei of the tropozoid is defined as distinct ovoid shaped nucleus with a large central parasol or large parasol. That resembles the eyes of the old man's face. This one is the goggles or the eyes or the, what you call this? Old man's face with uh, eyeglass. Aside from that, no, aside from the two distinct nucleus or two distinct nuclei, it is important for us to remember that this Georgia intestinalis trapezoid is also equipped with what we call median bodies. Median bodies or also known as the parabasal bodies. We also have the axis style. And that's a rod shape that supports the body of our intestinalis, of our Georgia labia. Okay. Aside from that, there are eight flagella present in the trapezoid of our Georgia intestinalis. One pair located on the anterior, two pairs located at the median body and one pair no, in our posterior body. So ilan yung flagella niya? Two plus four or two posterior, four median, and two anterior. That is eight. Okay? 
Ibig sabihin, there are eight eight phylogenera can be seen in the body or in the trophozoite form of Jarja intestinans. And if you were asked where is the location of this eight flagella, again, one pair anterior, one pair posterior, and two pairs median bulb. Okay. Now we, we describe the trophozoites of, of Georgia intestinalis. Hindi yung old man's face. Okay. The picture on the and on the other side of the screen, this one, yeah, that is your Georgia Lambia. So Georgia Lambia ito or si Georgia intestinalis. Sir, I'm a bit confused. Ano po po dalaga ang pangalan niya? Georgia Lambia or Georgia intestinalis? Before the discovery of Georgia Lambia, no? Or Georgia intestinalis, before the gamitin on Georgia Lambia, ang una ginagamit talaga, Georgia intestinalis, as described by Anton Van Leeuwenhoek. No? Pero nung una, they believe that Georgia intestinalis is non-pathological until such time that Dr. F. Lamb discovered that Georgia intestinalis can be a pathogenic protozoan. Okay? So in honor to the contribution of Dr. Lamb, they named it as Georgia Lambia. Okay? There is also sucking this located in the body of our uh, Georgia intestinalis. Again, the, the size is 8 to 20, 5 to 16 micrometers wide. A tear shape or a tear drop with a falling leaf motility. No, with a bi bilaterally symmetrica. What do we mean by bilaterally symmetrica? This is true with Georgia Lambia and even in our uh, nematodes. Ano pong ibig sabihin kapag sinabi natin bilaterally symmetrical? When we said bilaterally symmetrical, when you divide no, when you divide a parasite into two, dividing it to the left to the right, what you can see in the left is also present in the right. Okay? That's what, that's what we mean by bilaterally symmetrical. Okay? Now, how about for the Georgia intestinalis cyst? If you still remember our discussion in amoebas, I've said there that the nuclear characteristics that is present in trophozoite is most likely present in, a, in the cystic stage. That is also true with our flagellates. No? Kung ano yung makikita mo sa trophozoites, usually hindi na makikita mo sa cystic stage. Yun nga lang, yung trophozoite ni Georgia intestinalis, meron siyang dalawang nucleus. Pagdating kay Georgia intestinalis, meron siyang apat na nucleus. Four nucleus can be seen into the mature cyst. Ibig sabihin, okay, yung immature cyst, mga dalawa lang. Okay? Mature cyst of Georgia intestinalis will have four nucleus. Yung immature cyst, meron siyang dalawang nucleus. Please take note of that. There's also median bodies or parabasal bodies. And there is what we call cytoplasm beginning to retract from the cell wall. Take note guys, now take note guys that okay, uh, there is no peripheral chromatin in the nuclei of our Georgia intestinalis. Okay? And on the cytoplasm, there is what we call retracted from the cell wall. Is Georgia intestinalis pathogenic? Yes. Okay? Now, take note of this. 
the laboratory diagnosis for Georgia intestinal is requires stool as the sample, small intestine biopsies, and even duodenal aspirates, like what I am saying a while ago. Now, how are we going to collect duodenal content that is through aspiration or even what we call enterotest? Fecal antigen, like for the detection of the antigen of entamoeba histolytica, can be possible also to our Georgia intestinal list. And the immunological assay's principle on the detection of the fecal antigen is no other than ELISA or EIA or ELISA. Direct fluorescence and Western immunoblotting shows, or shows a promising result for the antigens of our Georgia intestinalis. Real-time real polymerase chain reaction or the RT-PCR can also be used to quantify, or not to amplify rather, the presence of Georgia intestinalis. Now let's discuss the life cycle of Georgia intestinalis or Georgia lambia. Again, take note, people of God, that the life cycle of our Georgia intestinalis begins when a human or a human accidentally ingests no, food contaminated with the cystic form of Georgia lambia. From ingestion, okay, so ingestion punta sa intestine, sa duodenum. Okay, where our cystic stage will undergo uh, morphological transformation from cyst to trophozoites. Now, since it's already trophozoite in form, ano yung nangyayari? It will multiply. And once that the environment for the trophozoites is not suitable for their survival, what will happen is it will transfer or it will transform back into our cystic stage. It is important to know that the gastric juices in the stomach stimulates the transformation of our uh, parasites. Okay. Now, once the tetrapozoids establish multiplication, there will always be a longitudinal binary fission. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Every eight hours, magmumultiply siya. Okay. Why these trophozoites are capable to attach in our intestinal mucosa or in the duodenum mucosa? It is capable to attach because of its sucking disc. May sucking disc po sila. Now, remember, yung trophozoite ni entamoeba histolytica, nadidisseminate siya into other organs. Remember that the trophozoites of Georgia intestinalis can also invade other organs, bile duct, and even gallbladder. Again, take note that the change in the environment that triggers our trophozoites to, uh, multi, uh, to dito, transform. Okay. Ano yung mga yun? Unacceptable conditions for the trophozoites, ibig sabihin, yung environment is not suitable for them to survive. Aside from that, is trophozoite response by converting the cyst as they migrate to the large bowel. Remember, uh, Georgia lambia remains viable for as long as three months in water. And I want you to take note that Georgia intestinalis resists chlorination. chlorination. What do you mean, sir, by chlorination? Ano yung ibig sabihin mong resist? Di ba usually we put chlorine in our water? Para yung tubig, malinis. No, for, 
water therapy. Kaso, yung ating Georgia Lambia, they can survive in that. Ano yung maganda mong ilagay? Iodine. No? Remember, any trophozoites that exist in the human host disintegrate due to their fragile composition. What is the most common cause or what is the most common transmission of Georgia intestinalis? Contaminated food or water. Take note of this. Georgia Lambia is also capable of what we call steatorrhea. Steatorrhea. What is steatorrhea? There is an increased excretion of fats in the stool greater than 5 grams per day. Which causes our stool pale? No? Because of the malabsorption. Kaya kapag pail, ang kulay ng stool, pero diarrheic, hindi sa istulitika yun. That is your Georgia intestinalis. There was a question last time in the uh, quiz show. Ang sabi, which of the following which of the following stool, uh, which of the following parasites pala? which of the following parasites can is most probably seen is most probably in a pale stool sample with increased fats A. Histolytica B. A. Lumbricoides. C. G. Lambia. D. Paul. Unang-una, no? Unang-una, yung Georgia, uh, yung ating entamibestolitika ka, doesn't to do with increased fat secretion. Pangalawa, yung Georgia, yung ating entamiba histolytica, usually, ito ay ano? Mucoid. Binigyan ka na dito ng idea with increased fats. Aba, ay sino yan? Si Georgia Lambia. Bakit? Steatorlia, malabsorption. Okay. Transmitted via food. Or water. Usually water. Bakit water? Kasi nga, siya ay resistant sa chlorination. Chlorination. Hand to mouth, possible. Unprotected sex is also possible. Ano yung ibig sabihin ng sex? Okay. Since Georgia Lambia resides in the duodenum, no, uh, this condition is what we call the anal. Okay. That's why the oral Anal sex is the most common in unprotected sex. Flies and uh, flies and cockroach can serve as the vector. This is just a mechanical vector. No? Doesn't do anything in the life cycle of the parasite. It is not it is not a part of the parasite life cycle in the first place. It just transform, con, uh, transport, not transform, transport parasites from one to another location. But not, but not, no, part of the life cycle. Okay, again, it is considered as the most common intestinal parasites, especially among children. Okay, the cyst, uh, this is what I'm telling a while ago, the cyst resists routine water chlorination. Chemical and filtered processes may require. You can use iodine if you want. No? Contamination of food possible after exposure to infected water. 
Now, who are at risk of acquiring parasitic infection in relation to Jarjalambia? Children in the daycare centers, self-explanatory why. Individual in areas with poor sanitation and travelers to and who drink water in unknown endemic areas. Kaya yung Jarjalambia, no, kilala siya tas tawag na traveler's diarrhea. Okay? So, Georgia Lambia kailangan din as gay bowel syndrome. Because of its, you know, in, era, ano? in anal oral sex. Kaya siya tinawag na gay, ba, uh, gay bowel syndrome. Bakit naman siya tinawag na travelers sa diarrhea? Kasi before, yung mga travelers, kung san-san-san lang sila umingaw. And Georgia Lambia can... survive on that condition. Individuals who practice unprotected sex, sex usually homosexual males. I am not saying na sila lang. Usually, sa kanila nakikita yung gay bowel syndrome. Now, there are several human rese animal reservoirs. Again, when you said reservoir, it, 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 it's not actually part of the life cycle. This reservoir host just allow the parasites to, you know, continue its life cycle. We have the weavers, the muskrats, the water wolves, no? and domestic animals. You might say, you might ask, sir, ano ba yung mga uh, weavers, muskrats, and water wolves na yan? Wolves na yan. E di ito po, ayan. Para silang daga na ewan. Basta yan yun. Okay? These animals can be the reservoir host of Georgia intestinalis. Aside from that, domestic animals such as sheep, dog, and cattle can be, you know, can be a reservoir host of our Georgia intestinalis. Okay. Georgia intestinalis can be asymptomatic. Okay. But, again, kagaya nga ng sinabi natin, ito ay pathogenic. Ano yung mga conditions associated sa symptomatic intestinal gergesis? Na yun nga, traveler's diarrhea na sinasabi natin kanina. Diarrhea, abdominal pain, and cramping, weight loss, anorexia, chronic fatigue, and flatulence. Ano yung anorexia? Yan. Anorexia is a dis uh, eating disorder. With low body weight. Kain ka lang ng kain, pero ganyan naman yung katawan mo. Butot balat. What is naman uh, flatulence? This is a condition no, that there is a build up of gas in the digestive system that can lead into what we call abdominal discomfort. Mayroong hangin sa intestine na hindi mailabas. Severe cases of Georgia intestinalis can, can cause fat-soluble vitamin deficiency. Bakit? Kasi mayroong malabsorption of fats. Folic acid deficiencies as well as hyponatremia with, hypo, with hypogammaglobinemia. Okay. Incubation period typically range from 10 to 36 days. So, ibig sabihin, Hindi naman porket ikaw ay nagkaroon agad ng exposure, ay bukas meron ka agad sakit. Usually 10 to 36 days ang kanyang incubation period. It is also considered as self-limiting condition wherein after 10 to 41 days, the condition will subside. Pero pwede rin po siyang maging chronic infection. Pwede siyang bubalik. Pero wala ka nang in, uh, nandun pa yung parasite pero wala nang infection. Okay. And take note that individuals with an IgG deficiency seems to be susceptible in the recurring infections. Treatment is the same treatment as protozoans, metronidazole. Prevention and control, upper hand washing, wound handling, 
adhering to uh, to food uh, protect food from insects and avoid using human stool as the fertilizer this is just the dose of metronidazole flagyl now metronidazole generic flagyl brand lang yan okay kagaya ng sinabi ni sir ito po yung mga common name mga other names na georgia lambia georgia intestinalis and georgia duodenalis next in line is we have the kilomestic mesh nili trapezoid Kilomastic mesh nili trapezoid. No, ano yung meron sa kanya? The nucleus, or the size rather, the size range from 5 to 25 micrometers by 5 to 10 micrometers. An average length of 8 to 15 micrometers. The, the trapezoid, no? Of our mesh nili ay merong cytostome with fibrils there's also a spiral groove and three flagella uh, anterior how are we going to describe the nucleus with one central or eccentric karyosome now with no peripheral chromatin and one of the most important thing to remember about kilomestic mesh trapezoid is the presence of the posterior curve. Yan. Meron tayong three flagella anterior and one flagella posterior. Now, how about kilomestic mesh nili cyst? Ito naman yung lemon-shaped cyst. No? A lemon-shaped cyst with a clear hyaline knob. Kilomestic mesh nili trophozoid, meron siyang posterior, curve posterior. Meron rin siyang spiral groove with four flagella. Yung cyst ni kilomestic mesh nili, kilomastic mesh nili, lemon-shaped cyst with clear hyaline knob. Yun yung palatandaan nun eh. With clear Hyaline knob. Kapag sinabi sa'yo, there is what we call the presence of a lemon-shaped lemon cyst with clear hyaline knob. That is your philomestic mesh nili. Okay. The size is 5 to 10 micrometers and the average size of 7 to 10 micrometers by 3 to 7 micrometers. Ano yung maganda sa nucleus? Nikilomestic mesh nili with large central karyosome and no peripheral chromatin. Kagaya nung kay trophozoids. Okay. Other structures that can be found on the cytoplasm, there is a well-defined cytostome located on one side of the nucleus. Meron ba din cytostome ang ating trophozoid? Yes, meron. Okay. Remember guys that kilomestic mesh nili is usually asymptomatic but it, if it becomes symptomatic or photogenic, it only requires stool as the sample of choice. Okay. Uh, mode of transmission includes consumption of contaminated food and water or hand-to-mouth contamination. I us usually, Asymptomatic, again, if it causes infection, no? treatment is not usually indicated. Self-limiting, pero pwede rin pong gamitan ng mga antiprodozoan medications. How about the entamoeba fragilis? Take note of this. The entamoeba fragilis is formerly classified as entamoeba. Formerly classified as uh, amoeba pala, no? entamoeba, amoeba. No? However, in the latter discovery or analysis and studies, they found out that the pathogenesis of entamoeba, the entamoeba fragilis, is synonymous to our 
flagellates. Okay? So there are two nucleus, and the, the nucleus is equipped with what we call chromatin granules. The shape of the entamoeba fragilis is somehow irregular, unlike the shape of the other parasites. Si Meshnili, trophozoid pear. Yung trophozoid form, si Jarja, pear-shaped din, o kaya teardrop. Ito, irregular. Okay, take note, ha? Si Jarja intestinalis, pear shape. Si Kilomastic Meshnili, pear shape. Si Dientemibofragilis ay irregular. Another thing to remember, yung trophozoid ni Intestinalis at saka ni Meshnili, Meshnili, meron silang flagella. Ngayon, itong kay Dientamiba fragilis, wala siyang flagella. Meron siyang pseudopods. Eh, ang pseudopods kay amiba. Kaya nga sabi ko sa inyo, si Dientamiba fragilis is formerly classified as amiba. Okay. At yung, yung, yung motility nito, almost similar to the motility of amibas. Progressive road hyaline pseudopodia. Okay. Ano pa yung magandang tandaan kay Dientamibofragilis? Meron siyang bacteria saan? Sa kanyang cytoplasm. Okay. Dientamibofragilis, if becomes a symptomatic, or symptomatic rather, will require stool sample as the specimen of choice. However, it requires multiple samples to rule out if it's present. Makakasid, contamination lang yan. Okay, um, immunological assays such as conventional or real-time PCR can be used for the detection of dientamiba fragilis. There is no clear mode of transmission or even life cycle for dientamiba fragilis. It is believed no, pinaniniwalaan niya na ang dientamiba fragilis ay with poor life cycle. And the only morphological form, o ito, nabawasan ka na ng, ng inyong din, kasi the only morphological form present now kay entamiba fragilis is the tropozoite form. Since the life cycle still remains unclear and poorly understood. Malay natin, baka meron talagang cystic stage say si dientamibo fragilis. At baka, after being classified as flagellated par parasite, if there will be several studies no, on the genetic composition of dientamibo fragilis, baka ikaw makasabot na si dientamibo fragilis pala ay dapat amiba ulit. There is also, uh, okay, later na lang. I think it's in the next slide. So I will tell it later na lang. No, to rarely ingest RBCs. No, no evidence of tissue invasion. Okay. Mucosal scripts of the large intestine is the location of our Georgia intestinalis, ah, I'm sorry, dientamibo fragilis in the body. Now, like what I said, ang clear nga ang kanyang life cycle. Yung mode of transmission, exact mode of transmission ni dientamibo fragilis also remains unclear. Okay. And there is a postulate, a theory, na nagsasabi that the presence of the entamido fragilis is associated in the presence of Ascaris lumbriconides and Enterobius vermicularis. But it remains unclear. No? Unproven theory. 
Okay? Again, there's a possible theory or an unproven theory stating or saying that the transmission is via helminthic eggs, particularly Enterobius vermicularis and Ascaris tumpetoides. Okay. Uh -huh. Na, nakasulat dito. Mm, yeah. The geographic distribution is unknown because of unknown life cycle, population at the risk, children, homosexual men, individuals in semi-communal or constitutional environment, institutional environment. Possible mode of transmission, possible ang sabi, person-to-person -person or oral anal transmission. Uh -huh. Pwede maging asymptomatic, no? pero it varies. Ano yung mga conditions na pwede na-experience ng, ng patient? Diarrhea. With, could you imagine, diarrhea, after diarrhea, constipation naman. After constipation, diarrhea. Ang sakit dun sa tiyan. A bloody or mucoid stool is also possible. Okay, flatulence, nausea and vomiting, weight loss, fatigue, or weakness, low-grade eosinophilia. O oh, yan, tandaan, low-grade eosinophilia. Proritis, no? itching. Okay, so the treatment includes iodokinol, tetracycline, or paranomycin. Prevention and control, since hindi nga natin alam masyado or maliwanag, ang pagkakaintindi kay dientamibofragilis, yung exact measure on how to break the infection of dientamibofragilis remains unclear. Okay. E di yun magandang gawin. E di good sanitation and good proper hygiene. Okay. Next in line is we have Trichomonas hominis trapezoid. Take note that Trichomonas hominis trapezoid, no? is 7 to 12 a uh, 7 to 20 micrometers by 5 to 18 micrometers average size of 10 to 12 uh, the trapezoid of trichomonas hominis is a pear shape no meron din siyang tinatawag na costa at meron siyang tinatawag na undulating membrane nice to know that the costa of the trichomonas hominis covers more or almost full of the body. The same thing goes with the undulating membrane. The undulating membrane of Trichomonas hominis also covers the whole body of the trapezoid. No? There are anteriorly uh, located flagella and posterior flagella. So, meron siyang uh, 3 to 5. Okay. Tatlo or 4, posteriorly, yung isa naman, have 4 anterior located, ang isa ay 1 sa posterior. There is also a, what we call axostyle present in the body of Trichomonas hominis. Laboratory diagnosis is tool. That's the gold standard. Then take note that the only morphological form present to Trichomonas hominis is the trophozoites. Most likely mode of transmission is the ingestion of trophozoites that is possibly from contaminated milk. Okay. There was a study before Nang sabi, kaya from contaminated milk. Kasi, originally, daw. Daw, Trichomonas hominis is a parasite of cattle. Okay. Kaya yung milk contaminated at hindi naman na pasteurized, doon daw nakukuha yung Trichomonas hominis. That's a theory, no? a study. Now, what are the clinical symptoms? Usually, again, asymptomatic. No? Pero kung naging 
symptomatic and abdominal pain, cramping, and diarrhea. Treatment is not usually indicated, pero kung mayroong gamot, metronidazole will do. Prevention and control, siyempre, good hygiene. Next in line is we have Enteromonas hominis. Enteromonas hominis, the size is 3 to 10 micrometers and 3 to 7 micrometers by 3 to 7 micrometers. The average length is 7 to 9 micrometers. Take note, how are we going to define or describe Enteromonas hominis? So that's the size. What else? Uh, the, the shape is ovoidal. I oval, sometimes semicircle or half circle. Okay, there are also flagella, four in total, no? three directed anterior and one directed posterior. There are no other structures present in the cytoplasm. The motility of intramonas hominis is jerky. How about the enteromonas hominis cyst? Take note, guys, that the enteromonas hominis cyst, as you can see, meron po siyang four na nucleus. Aside from that, no, aside from that, tingnan din natin that the shape of our enteromonas hominis is oval. Yung kanyan trophozoite oval din. Pero ito ay elongated. And magandang tandaan din natin that the Entromonas hominis cyst meron siyang well-defined cyst wall. Okay? Take note of this. Entromonas hominis, ang sabi natin dito, can be binucleated or quadrinucleated. And interesting to know, opposite sides ang location. With central cariosome, ang kanyang nuclei, and no peripheral chromatin. Again, Wala pong other structure that can be present in the cytoplasm of Enteromonas hominis cyst. Stool is still the standard of my, uh, standard sample. No careful examination due to the parasite size. Maliit eh. No? 3 to 10. Maliit yun. Epidemiology, worldwide distribution in warm and temperate climates. Take note of the primary mode of transmission is ingestion of infected cysts. Usually asymptomatic, pero kagaya ng mga sinasabi ko kanina, kapag naging asymptomatic, diarrhea, or kapag naging symptomatic, diarrhea, abdominal pain. Gamot, metronidazole will do. Next in line is we have retortamonas intestinalis. May iba si enteromonas kay retortamonas. Okay? Retortamonas intestinalis trophozoid. Okay. It's 3 to 7 micrometers by 5 to 6 micrometers, an average of 3 to 5 micrometers. Take note that it's ovoid, again, with jerky motility. Tingin natin yung kanyang nuclei. One. One nga lang ba ang kanyang nuclei? Yes. No, para siyang si plankton. Kung titingnan mo. Lagyan natin dito ng paa. Yan. Tatandaan mo na yan. Si Retorta Monas Hominis, bigyan mo siya ng common name. Bigyan mo siya ng nickname. Si Plankton. Ano mo maala lang si Plankton? Meron siyang one. Nucleus. No? Meron siyang one nucleus with small central cariosome. Meron siyang flagella. Two anterior. Ayan o. Oh. Yan yung buhok ni Plankton. O yung sungay ni Plankton. Okay. So that is retortamonas hominis. Meron din po siyang cytostome. Sino pa yung may cytostome na napag-usapan natin kanina? Si Mesh Nili. Right? Take note that cytostome extending halfway down length with well-defined fibril holder opposite of the nucleus in the anterior end. Meron po bang cyst si intestinalis? Meron naman. Okay. Ito yung magandang tandaan. Si cyst ni retortamonas intestinalis. Meron tayo dito yung tinatawag na fused fibrils. No? 
At itong fused fibrils na ito, ikilala ito din sa tawag na ano, birds beak. Ito sabi ko sa mga bata. Okay? Yung retortamonas intestinalis, teeth, meron siyang two fused fibrils. At itong fibrils na ito, no, resembles bird's beak. Yung bird, meron siyang itlog. At yung egg, kailangan mo siya sa torta. No? Retorta mo na. Bird's beak. Pero yung bird's beak, hindi makikita kay trophozoite. Makikita siya kay cyst. Yung cyst, ovoid. Itlog. Retorta. Okay? However, this bird's beak cannot be seen in a routine ONT examination. Bakit? Maganda itong makita in a stained smear. Laboratory diagnosis includes stool. Again, careful examination kasi maliit din si Reporta Monas. A mode of transmission, infected cyst. Kagaya nino nung mga nauna natin. No? Again, usually asymptomatic, treatment is not indicated. Kaya ng mga sinasabi ko kanina, yun din po yun. Prevention and control, hygiene, and sanitation. Next, enteromonas stenax. We are almost done. I'm sorry, a trichomonas stenax. Trichomonas stenax is an intest extra-intestinal parasite. Sino po yung counterpart ni Trichomonas stenax kay, kay Amoeba? Ang counterpart nito si Entamoeba gingivalis. Si gingivalis sa mouth. Si Trichomonas stenax sa mouth din. Teka lang. Sino yung isang Trichomonas na napag-usapan natin? Si Trichomonas hominis. Sa intestine yun. Consum consumption of contaminated food. Usually pinaniniwalaan sa mga milk. Contaminated milk. Ano yung sabi ko sa inyo kanina? Tandaan yung undulating membrane ni Trichomonas hominis. Yung undulating membrane ni Trichomonas hominis full of the body. Yung kay Trichomonas tenax, two-thirds. Mamaya, may Trichomonas vaginalis pa. Tandaan nyo. Full of the body, ang undulating membrane, ang costa full of the body, Trichomonas hominis. Trichomonas tenax, two-thirds. May cytosto, may flagella, may cytoplasm, may nucleus, may axostyle. Pare-pareha sila. Iba't iba lang yung size. Iba't iba lang yung orientation. No? Oval shape, pure shape. No? Oval shape, pure shape. With one nucleus. No? And the nucleus is ovoid in shape. With vascular region, filled with chromatin granules. Flagella, total of five. Four, anterior, one posterior. Tingnan niyo natin. Four anterior. No? And this is the ex the posterior flagellum. Flagella. Now this is the axis time. What else? Ah, uh, yan yung sinasabi ko sa inyo, undulating membrane two thirds of the body. Take note. Yung undulating membrane at saka costa okay, two thirds of the body. Laboratory diagnosis includes mouth scrapings, tonsillar crypts, colloquial pockets. Okay. Now, uh, life cycle includes, res, uh, it resides in the gum line. Yung sa may mga tartar. No? And it is believed that Trichomonas tenax is a scavenger. Kumakain siya ng mga bunok. Take note that no cystic stage. Even though that it resides in the mouth, no, yung trophozoites niya are unable to survive in the gastric juices. Kaya no, hindi siya pwede makita sa stool. Kasi pwede siya makikita sa stool eh. 
Sa so gastek just pa lang patay na siya. Mouth scrapings for trichomonostenax. The exact mode of transmission is still unknown. However, studies suggest that it can be acquired from or via contaminated utensils or dishes. Yung mga ginamit ng kutsara, tinidor, na hindi nagugasa ng husay, can be the source or droplet contamination. Okay. Respiratory tract involvement in patient with select pulmonary issues. Pwede. Pero sa intestine, hindi. Parang si Jarja, ah, si Gingivalis. Pwede rin sa pulmonary, pero intestinal hindi. Destroyed by gastric juices. Visually, walang drug gamot, pero kung may gamot, pwede metronidazone. Pwede po yan. And since there is no exact, clear, defined mode of transmission, eh di wala rin magandang prevention and control. Wala rin eksakto. Maganda doon, practice proper hygiene, including oral hygiene. Okay. I guess this is the last parasite, if I am not mistaken, Trichomonas vaginalis. No? Undulating membrane, half of the body. Costa, half of the body. Undulating membrane of hominis, full of the body. Costa, full of the body. Undulating membrane of tenax, two-thirds of the body. Costa, two-thirds of the body. Okay. Trichomonas vaginalis is uh, with nucleus din siya, no ovoid din, kagaya nung kay tenax. What else? Ovoid, uh, round or pear-shaped ang kanyang trophozoid. With rapid jerky motility. Tandaan mo yan, rapid jerky motility. I'll show you video ng rapid jerky motility. Okay. Uh, nuclei is one ovoid non-descript. Meron siyang flagella, three to five extending posterior and one extending, I don't know, three to five extending anterior and one extending two posterior. Okay, kagaya na sinabi ko, yung undulating membrane will help us to differentiate trichomonas vaginalis from tenax from hominis. The laboratory use or the laboratory test that we can use is saline wet preparation or span urine. Random urine can be vaginal or urethral discharge and prostatic secretions. Take note, trichomonas vaginalis is common to female. Okay. Pwede po ba ang male? Yes. Hindi naman porket sinabing vaginalis ay sa babae lang yun. Male can be a carrier. Okay. DNA-based assays has been developed to detect the presence of trichomonas vaginalis. Okay. Uh, we can use vaginal swab for, from female. Urine, sediments, and semen sediment can also be used for male. Okay, trichomonas vaginalis incubation period is up to three days. Okay, so for the life cycle, it resides in the mucosal surface of the vagina in women. Okay, the tropocytes replicate via longitudinal binary fission. Tropocytes feed bacteria and leukocytes. It try, uh, okay, it tries in slightly alkaline or slightly acidic pH. Diba sabi mo, sir, hindi sila nakaka-survive sa extreme acidic pH. Yes. Pero ginagawa niyang alkaline, the same thing goes with the other bacteria. Ginagawa nilang alkaline yung environment so that they can survive. And alkaline, vaginal environment means unhealthy. Bakit? Yung mga normal flora, si acidophilus, mababa yung inoculum, mababa yung colony. Okay. It resides in the prostate gland region and epithelium of the urethra in men. Transmission. You know, you know how. You know why. Kung bakit pwede sa lalaki. 
detailed life cycle in men is unknown. Pero one thing I am sure and one thing we are sure of, men will acquire that during unprotected intercourse. Okay, so that's the primary mode of transmission. Pwede rin po yung uh, vertical transmission from mother to child via birth canal. Okay, other modes of transmission, contaminated towels, sponges, and underclothing. Most especially if you are sharing underwear. Okay. Troposites hardly uh troposites hardly by nature. By nurture. You can survive in urine, in wet sponges, and damp towels for several hours and in water for 40 minutes. Kaya sa urine, kapag nakikita mo, rocket jerky mo to the pa ikot ikot siya doon. Okay. Now, like what I've said, trichomonas vaginalis can cause persistent keratitis. This is a large, tender prostate. This is what we call dysuria, painful urination, nocturia, ihi ka ng ihi sa gabi, and epididymitis. Epididymitis, inflama inflammation of the epididymis. No. Persistent keratitis is a men. How about persistent vaginitis? Some women. There is a foul-smelling greenish secretion. Kagaya po nito. Because of the vaginalis. There is a burning, itching, and chuffing sensation. Ito rin yung nagkokos na severe itching. Now, there is a home remedy for persistent vaginitis. Ano po yun? Uh, using a warm look water or look water. Ano ba sparing ng look? Ganun ba? Iwan ko. Water. Lagyan natin question mark. Yung maligam-gam na tubig. No? Lalagyan po ng vinegar. Okay, lalagyan ng vinegar. Okay, after ng vinegar, ano yung, ano yung, ano yung usually vinegar? Uh, yung apple cider vinegar. Okay. And then, ito yung gagamitin pang wash ng aerial region. Bakit? Vinegar. Acidy kasi ito. Di ba? And destroy yung um, vaginalis acidic environment. This is a home remedy. Ito yung gawin sa bahay. Uh, Trichomonas vaginalis is also the positive agent of what we call strawberry-like cervix. Bakit nagiging strawberry-like cervix? Agaya nito. This is a cervix. Meron siyang mga red spot because of trichomonas vaginalis. Infant infection includes respiratory and conjunctivitis. Okay? So treatment, metronidazole or flagyl and treatment of sexual partners is recommended. Bakit? Halimbawa, bakit recommended na pati yung lalaki gamutin? If they had an intercourse, Magaling na si female, no, ginamot si female, pero si men, nasa kanya pa din. So, mag intercourse, mapabalik lang. Carrier kasi siya eh. Usually, symptomatic, pero mayroong symptoms, or pero, pero, pero mag-cause na infection. Persistent, uh, persistent urethritis. So, kung mayroon si female, kung nakita kay female, it is recommended na yung men ay magpagamot din. The prevention and control includes adhering to protected sex, prompt diagnosis and treatment, avoidance of potentially infected towels, sponges, and underclothing, meaning to say don't share, and avoid sharing doubt equipment. And that is the end of our discussion about flash dates. Thank you and God bless you all.